Oh, hi friends, this is Sally. Hi friends, this is Sally on Camp Creek. Yep, that's me. I am Sally on Camp Creek. <laughs> and welcome to my living room. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back from my trip to to the big the big city of Oklahoma City, but actually more like outside of Oklahoma City. I was at my daughter's, but now I'm home, back on the creek, sort of, but not, because the creek's over there and I'm over here. Um, but here we are, and um, I just wanted to talk about yarn. This is my spot. This is my happy yarn place, right here. Everybody's gone. They all went to the lake or to work. My, my grandkids that live across the street uh, went to the lake, so... Um, I thought I would take the opportunity to get on here and talk about yarn because you know that's what I like to do. I like to talk about crochet and knitting and yarn and we've been doing some needle felting and that's been really fun. Um, and uh, anyway, so let's talk. Well, I'm glad to be home. I had a lot of fun at my daughter's, son-in-law's and my grand boys. And I was with them for about two weeks or more, actually, by the time you add it all up. Because they came here for a few days, and then I went with them and stayed for about ten days, I think. And now I'm home, and my farm dog doesn't like me. He likes my, my son and his uh, girlfriend better than me. Uh, and whatever. I just think, just be that way. It's because they took his training collar off. I know why. And he doesn't want to come over here anymore. But he did come over last night, so maybe he's forgiven me. He gets irritated when I'm gone, I think. And so, anyway, he's not in here. He's not here because he's with them. And so, they were all going to go do some things, and I thought I would just show you what I've been working on. Um, last time I talked, I was talking about my sock, my green turquoise Patton's Croy turquoise striped sock. And as you recall, I'm sure, uh, I had a broken needle in one of the sides, a double pointed needle. Crystal Palace needles I got in a sale, a, a garage sale my daughter found, found them. And they're really sturdy and tough, but one of them got broke. So I did get it put in there, back in there finally, got them back on the needles. But I had so much trouble with that stitch around the gusset. I really had a time with that. That first stitch, getting it... Um, where you transition from the leg into the heel flap. So I had lots of trouble with that, and I took it out multiple times, and finally I just decided I'm not taking it out again. I will just go back in with the needle and some yarn and fix, fix it if I end up with a hole. I probably shouldn't do it that way, but I'm not a purist when it comes to knitting, and so I will, and it'll all be good. So I spent three days trying to fix that, taking it out, going back, taking it out, and I kept getting that hole. I think the problem was, excuse me, that I had some loose stitches above and those loose stitches were working their way down and um, causing that spot. I, I had been, I had some pain in my hand and so I did some rows in Continental, and I can knit Continental or English picking, whatever you want to call it, either one. But when I, oh, 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 I can tell you I know why this tripod cost a quarter at that garage sale. I can tell you for sure. It keeps losing. It's like a drunk octopus. It just, just starts going. Oh, it's going. See what I mean? I don't think this is going to work, but we're going to try it. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Maybe it's the thing it's setting on, you think? Let's try it here. Okay. I bought this thing at a garage sale for like a quarter. And I thought, oh, that's just what I was praying for. Well, let me tell you, it wasn't what I was praying for. Because it goes all wonky on me. It just goes wonky on me. Okay. Nobody breathe. Maybe it won't. The legs just start going like a drunk octopus. I've never seen a drunk octopus, but that's what I think it would do. 
anyway, so where was I? So when I switch from Continental to the other, my tension is different. And I'm fine as long as I'm doing one or the other all throughout a project. When I start switching around, I have issues. Anyway, I left that in the car, and I haven't really done any more on it, so it doesn't matter. But what I have done is, um, well, I showed you this. This is my sprinkles uh, shawl, or poncho. This is for my four-year-old granddaughter, Josie Ray. And it's got to have the tie, and it's got to have the fringe. It is too big. Of course it's too big, because I can't make anything to fit. Um, but we're going to go with it anyway. And I'm right now working on the I-cord. Um, whoops, my needle fell out. The I-cord tie. And I may make two of these, although it takes me so long to do this. And as you see, my needle fell out. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't like the chained tie. And I know there's some other methods, but I will probably just finish this I-cord. I wanted to put two ties in it, but I don't think I'm going to have the patience for that. It has actually a place it could have two ties. But I'm going to make that, and, and I may weave it in and out in a kind of a decorative way so that it won't look funny. <laughs> and then it will have fringe. This is one whole skein. Yes, I did use a little bit of the other skein uh, because I wanted a color match, but I didn't use any more than this. So this was at the end of this skein. And then because I wanted the purple at the top, I switched to this skein. So I'd say you could make this with one skein. And I will use that skein for the tie and the fringe. If I'd have made it in the right size, I probably could have got the tie and some of the fringe out of it. But it's okay, because I had four of those. I bought four of those on sale at Hobby Lobby. This is cotton, because I wanted it to be cool. Sugar wheel cotton sprinkles on top. I really like this yarn. It's very soft. It was $7.49. It's too expensive. Um, five ounces, 335 yards. 142 grams, 100% cotton. It recommends that you use a four millimeter or size six or a G, whatever. Um, size eight, I mean. Uh, size six US, size eight UK. Uh, knitting needles or a 4.5 crochet hook, which it says is a size seven. I believe my 4.5 is size seven or G. A G hook is what I've been using for that. Anyway, um, and it's really nice. And I had four of these, and so I, I met a little girl at uh, football practice. My grandsons play football. And at football practice, I met a little girl, and she was I was knit, crocheting, and she wanted me to teach her. So I taught her. I happened to have this bag, and I had an extra hook. Always have an extra hook, let me tell you. Always, always. I have so many hooks, I'm telling you. I'm embarrassed at the hooks I have, and I just keep buying them. I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, I was at Hobby Lobby, and I got this yarn, and I hadn't, I had, didn't have my hooks with me. So I bought two hooks because I wasn't sure what size, and they're a dollar and a half a piece, although they're going up. So I had a hook I could give her, so I gave her a yarn, and I gave her a hook. Um, and then I went back to, to get the size hook that, I had been using. I gave her a G. I had an H and a G. Um, so I went, we were at Walmart and they had these on sale again. These are Pioneer Woman style case and it has all the, all the hooks in it up to, uh, I will tell you because I can't remember. Up to, uh, a J. Does it have a K? It might have had a K. It had a K in there. Yeah, up to a K. From the little ones up to a K. Little tiny ones, I can't remember. Anyway, and um, I bought I bought one of these because they were only $10, and that's a lot of hooks for $10, but I love the pretty case, so I bought one. And then I gave it to my um, 
my uh, son's girlfriend, who I'm just going to call my daughter because I've decided that if they if they decide they don't like each other, I don't care. She's still mine. I, she, she's going to be mine for life. I just think she's precious. Precious. Anyway, she's learning to crochet, so I gave her one. And then when I was there getting this hook replaced, they had some more of these for ten dollars. So of course I bought one, right? Because I don't need any more hooks. I just keep buying them. But the cases are nice. And I gave one of my granddaughters a boy case that was like that. That I bought at a garage sale for a couple of bucks. Because she's, um, how old is she? Seven? And she's crocheting. She's just learned. Both my granddaughters have learned. My grandsons are can can do it too somewhat, I believe. And we were going to do that while I was at their house, and we just never did. It was so busy. But, um, so anyway, so I, even though I buy hooks, is my point, I do give them away. And so I don't feel that bad about buying them. You know. Um, but that's turned out really well. And so I will have, I will have, uh, one left, one of these left over, I believe. And maybe some extra. And so... I don't know, I'll make something out of it. And that's been really nice, and I've really enjoyed that. I really like that yarn. I have bought this yarn before. It's it's pretty, it's, you know, very thread-like being, it being I suppose, because it's a cotton. Um, but I like the way it lays, and I love the way it feels. It's super soft. And that little girl that was learning to crochet, she just made a mess out of that yarn. She, she I just gave her my poncho, and... I, because you know you just take out what's not correct, and sometimes a, for a starter, for someone learning, it's sometimes easier for them to have a piece of fabric to hold on to, rather than just little strings. So, because they can get so discouraged with just the very little, few stitches at the beginning can be really discouraging. So she was go, she made a couple of rounds, and she picked it up just slam bam. You know, she she did a really good job. I was amazed, um, but uh. That yarn tolerated all of that tight tension, drop the needle, pull it, rubbing it a lot. I thought, well, it may be fuzzy. I may have to cut that piece out. No, I did not. I pulled it out, smoothed that yarn a little bit, crocheted it back in, and you can't tell where all of those wonky stitches that had been, you know, crocheted in, pulled out, crocheted in, pulled out 50 times. You can't even tell where. So I was really, really proud of that. I was excited. Now this pattern is just my uh, my made up pattern, but for the most part, my mom used to make these. She made them for everybody on the block, and uh, so I just do it the way she did. And that is to measure around your head. That's going to be the size of your neck. Um, make sure your make a chain. Measure around your head with your chain. Hook it together, make sure it's not twisted, and then crochet your whatever you want for your um, yoke, we'll call it. And that's where you're going to put your tie. And as you can see, I don't know if you can, but maybe you can, I've got, don't look at the purple, just look at the pink. I have some rows of double crochet in there. And that is to accommodate the tie that will make it all look finished. Now, when I got done, I knew it was going to be too big. So I went back in and did another row of double crochet and some single crochets to cinch it up. And what that does is that puts... The tightest part of your crochet is going to be your first row. The tightest part of your knitting is going to be your last row. Sometimes you can't remember. So I know that that neck is going to be too loose, or it's going to be loose. So by by, um, or yeah, I don't want it to stretch at all, and I but I want more of a, a kind of a softer look at the top rather than just that old tight. So I put that one here. So I finish off and I go back up and I add some rows to the top and 
that makes it uh, a little more secure, but not stiff. I don't know if that makes sense. It does to me. Anyway, and when I did that, I did a little bit of increases at the shoulders and the front and the back. Just a simple little, little increase. I don't know. So when I get the tie in it, that will be good. And then, basically, I just put, a, I decide where the front and the back is going to go. And usually the way I do that is whatever, whatever seam looks the nicest. And I think this is the front. Okay, so I want my nice work to be at the front. Um, so I put my decrease at the back because I didn't need more than one. So the front, um, the color changes look better in that spine area. And then I just put a marker there and there and there and there. And so when I'm putting my um, top on it, I can know where I need to decrease, and that's why I did that. And I don't measure. Some people would count and whatever. I don't because I just don't. Then I go down and I start at a shoulder, and I just make my double crochets till I get to that marker, and then I do um, a three double crochet cluster, crochet two, a three double crochet cluster in the same spot and then I go around until I get to the back and I do the same thing. And if you kind of watch in this color change yarn, if you watch, you know, your your color placement, um, it, I just don't want the, the dark colors to change suddenly. And so that worked out really good and I was very glad for that. It's subtle and especially in the front. The side, that's why I picked that side to be the front. Um, so, however, having said that, my mom always made this. It's just very simple. There's no pattern. It, there's no rules other than you want it to be the same one way or as the other. And it, I've never had one that I had too much trouble with getting that way. If I had a stitch, one that was a stitch off, I just skipped that stitch in the end. You can't tell. But Claire from, um, I don't remember the name of her channel. It's left me. She's Australian. Claire, what is it? It's Bobby123. I don't remember. That's terrible. Anyway, if you put in on YouTube, simple poncho pattern in all sizes, she will come up. She's a real pretty blonde lady. Anyway, I have watched her for years, years and years and years and years and years. And I watched her make this poncho and I thought it was so funny because she made it exactly like my mother did. You know, that's just how old patterns like that. But her instructions are so good because she's just really clear at, um, the way she is down to earth, very down to earth. And these are old videos from like when YouTube was like way, way back. And I have sent so many people to her channel. Um, I can't remember though. That's so annoying that I can't remember the name. Anyhow, I will bring her up next time. She's a real pretty blonde lady. And uh, she has her patterns. What's always nice about her patterns are they're, they're simple you feel like you're sitting down with somebody you know there's no uh, you know as some people some people who try to teach you things seem unrelatable or something and so it's it makes it more confusing i don't know but she's just so common her her teaching her instruction is so basic she's just really really good at it and she's really good at um Explaining it in a simple way, especially the young girls that I worked with, that I would send them to her channel because she had lots of tutorials and they were not, she didn't word things in a way that was just uh, intimidating. That's the word. She's not intimidating. Some fiber people are intimidating. I've taken classes before where I thought, 
I would love to ask a question, but I'm scared to, you know. Um, they just are, but Claire is not intimidating. So I will have to remember, uh, I will look it up because I can't remember the name of her channel. She's been on there forever. Um, so the other thing I did while I was at my daughter's was I wanted to make my grand boys all play football. My grandson that lives here, he's not, we don't have football for his age here. But my, uh, my daughter in love, <laughs> that's what I call her, um, has a son who plays football. She has several boys who play football. I think three of them play football. And then my two bigger boys play football. And my, my little boy likes football. So I wanted to make them all football, okay? That's just the deal. So um, I wanted to make big football pillows, but I found a pattern um, that was a football and broomy. Whoops. Whatever that was, I have no idea. Anyway, sky is falling. Um, and it was storybook crochets, crochet football. I wrote that down. And then I wrote the pattern down <laughs> in my little book. Um, and it's it's easy to see one page. But um, the storybook one was made with little bitty yarn. So they were small, really cute. And wouldn't that be a fun thing to make? Um, like my son, my grandsons are on a, a homeschool team because they're homeschool kids. And I just thought, oh, it'd be fun. If I had lots of time, I would make all the boys one with their number on it. It would be fun. But I probably won't do that. It just would be a fun thing to do. Anyway, I say this is storybook crochets pattern loosely because as I never follow a pattern correctly, it's been... <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. Goodness. The ragweed's blooming. It's been uh, modified because I can't read a pattern at the time. So it's imperfect. So rather than say I've made some mistakes, I'll say I modified the pattern. No. This was the first one. Now I haven't finished. I've got yarn enough in here to uh, do the final rows and finish it up. But uh, I, I've got to get some stuffing. So this is the first one I made. And you can see it's not perfect. Please don't judge me. I want to do their number. Some of them that play football have a number. And then my little boy that goes to a school where they don't have football, I'll put his daddy's number on it. And then the stitching. And this is the other one. You see they're totally different. This one, I, I liked my seams. I wanted my seams to meet, and so I kind of tried to modify that. But, and it, it's not exactly the greatest, but... The boys are going to throw them at each other and sleep with them, put them up. It doesn't matter. Their dog may eat it, you know, whatever. So then where I was home and I didn't have a lot of distraction, I went back and watched the video again and wrote the pattern down. And this one I'm doing exactly like the pattern. And it does have the color jog, which I know there's lots of ways to fix that. And I will do that on the next one. But I wanted to go precisely by the pattern and see what I ended up with. So I am here at my uh, straight um, area. There's 10 rows of no increases. And then you begin to decrease just like you increase. Super easy pattern. I mean, you know, you could make these quickly, very quickly. And it's really a cute pattern. So I think when it's done, it'll be the, the size that I wanted in the first place, you know. Um, and... And I think it's tapered really well. I have a baby shower uh, to go to next week, end, a week from today. And I thought I might make one for that baby and put his, the, the daddy's football number on it. He played football in high school um, to go with the other things that I made for the shower. Because it's so easy, super easy. The yarn that I'm using came from Walmart. I didn't know if I would like this yarn. I was very skeptical, but I could not find blanket yarn in the right color. I wanted this brown, this darker brown. But I found this, and I thought, you know, it's really not scratchy. It's not bad. It's respun, thick and quick, Lion Brand. It was like under $7 for this whole skein. I got two and a half of these out of one. I was surprised 
yarn has gotten so expensive, but um, it's espresso, espresso, and it is a, a super bulky six. It recommends an N13. Now, when I started out, I didn't have an N because I didn't have one with me. <laughs> I do have some, but I didn't have one with me. So this is made with like a J or a K. So then I got the bigger, and you can't even tell, because I do that thing where I just naturally adjust the tension to what I need for the yarn. I guess that's because I crochet, you know, when I was growing up and I crocheted, you might have three hooks. You had, you had, a G, you had some little tiny hooks. My mother had some tiny hooks for doilies. But then you had a, a G and an H. You might have an I. That's all you had. So whatever yarn you were using, you just adjusted it. You just adjusted your tension. Now we have all these choices in. I even have some in my, my tulip set that are like in-betweens, in between one and another, which is really nice. But I like that yarn. And then this is the hometown. Um, I got, this is in Houston, Houston cream. I don't know what that means, I don't know. It's a hometown. It's a line brand. I got this at Walmart. It's cheap. And it does pretty nice. It's kind of got a bit of a, a sheen to it. So anyway, I'll make those and I'll, I'll make three or four more. And that will be nice. Now, I have not worked on my beaded shawl at all because I haven't been home. And get over here. I was afraid to take it with me. But um, I did some tests. Have you ever done this? Hmm? I wiped yarn on your face, I'm sure you have. This is um, Super Saver Ombre Red Heart in Jazzy. And this is an afghan that I started for my living room. This color, you've seen it. It's down here. It's pretty, it's bright and pretty. Um, I don't know that I'm going to keep it for my living room, though. I, it may become my Christmas giveaway gift at the family Christmas. I like it real well, but it's kind of the wrong color. After I got my, my furniture in here, it was kind of the wrong color for this room. It, not that I care if it matches, but it really clashes bad. But anyway, I'm going to finish it because I think it's pretty, and it'll, it'll be, uh, I'll have that done. But I want to make a little pink blanket for a three-year-old little three-year-old girl. She likes pink. And that yarn color would be so perfect because it's the different shades of pink, but I want it to be soft. So I made a sample and I washed it and I dried it and it is as scratchy as can be. So I won't make that for a little baby. Now for a calf jaffkin, it's not a big deal. You know, that's, that's going to go on the back of the couch. You're going to pull it out and cover your feet up with it when you're watching TV and you're going to spill soda and popcorn butter on it and you're going to throw it in the washer and it's not a big deal. And then, you know, five or six times of that, it'll be softer. Um, but that ombre, that super saver ombre, I don't think stays as nice as even the old super saver used to, but that's just me. Um, I, uh, so I don't want that for a little girl. Oh my goodness gracious sakes almighty, I will have to go to Hobby Lobby <gasps> and get some yarn. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing. And since I've been home, I haven't got to do much. I'm real excited to get my beads out and start that, but I won't do that till Monday. Monday will be a quiet day here and I can get that out. I've got to go into my bedroom closet has become my hidey hole for my hoarding yarn problem that I have. And I've got to clean that out. I've got so many yarn tools, so many knitting crochet tools that I'm not going to use that I need to gift to someone or take to the thrift store or something. And it's just so hard for me to do that. But I, 
it's not right to keep those things when others would would have find a use for them and I have so many so I'm going to do that and I started to do that today but I didn't get very far because mm -hmm. I wanted to make a football so anyhow that's what I'm doing that's that's it um, I've been playing around with the needle felting and I will show you my little person um, probably Monday when I get some more done on it because it's going to be so cute. All the grandkids wanted to needle felt. They saw somebody do it and so I picked up a few things and my daughter and I did some and I'm going to I'm going to order some more tools because I think I can get them pretty cheap and I think they will have a lot of fun. I had all of them at the table trying to do it with just some pins that I had and they had fun and it was dangerous and they got poked, but it was okay. But I thought, okay, this is fun. And that stuff's not very expensive, believe it or not. Everything is so expensive, everything. But it wasn't too bad. So anyway, I didn't get poison ivy like I thought. Um, uh, it was all good. And we all survived um, the hot days. And I think it's going to rain tomorrow. It was hot today, not a cloud in the sky, but I heard a report that said we're under flood watch. I'm skeptical. Flooding in July would be very abnormal for us, but it's been an abnormal few years, hasn't it, in, in every way. Um, but we could use the rain. We're having lots of baby goats at the farm. I wish I knew how to put pictures in. I need to have my grandson show me. Because I have pictures of baby goats, all kinds of little baby goats. They're so cute. And my daughter in love is over there just milking. And um, she's such a good farm hand. So much fun to have somebody who likes to do that kind of stuff. Because, you know, I like that kind of stuff too. Um, and uh, it's been exciting around here. And my daughter was here. Bless her heart. She finished my painting. And she does like wood stuff, like she can make things with, uh, do cabinets. She painted my cabinets in the bathroom. They look better than most professionals, I would think. I mean, they're just perfect. She sands them first. I didn't know you were ever supposed to do that. I never sanded a cabinet in my life until she got old enough to, to run a sander. And she just worked and worked in here. Um, so it's cut, my little trailer's coming along. It's it's come a long way since it was purple and red in here. The walls were purple and red. And now they're this pretty cream color. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. Almond bisque, that's what it's called. And I have uh, almond bisque and moss green in my bathroom. My favorite color, moss green. I love to live in. I love that color. And I have burgundy and pink in there. And it's so pretty. I really, really love it. It's very girly, but that's okay because, you know, I'm a girly, so it's all right. Um, but it looks really good. Anyway, so that's all we're doing. We're just watching baby goats be born and watching chickens. Oh, I had a chicken disappear while I was gone. I have no idea where it went. It was just missing. I think that I let them out one day before I left, and maybe that was the day one didn't come home. I don't know. But my chickens are really getting old and it's time for a new crop. So here shortly, I'm going to do some work in my chicken pan. And then I'm going to go to my niece. She lives up, lives up in Wainoka. Wainoka. <laughs> Wainoka. Way up in Wainoka. Anyway, she's got chickens and she'll sell me some. She's got lots of chickens. So I can restock my chicken coop. Because they're getting old and they're not liking to lay very good. Um, so that'll be nice. And uh, I've got to get my propane stove in and have my sweet son and my sweet son-in-law work on that and get the line laid and get that hung. And then I'll have heat in the winter and I will be so set. So set. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to get things ready to go, I tell you. And, and then you got to figure out how to craft in the middle of that. But I don't really have any problem because I can go hide in the bathroom and crochet. Well, they're all in here working. I, not that I would ever do that, but I could. Anyhow, 
Oh, my um, old shale scarf is missing. It's almost finished, almost done. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I may keep it for myself. It's so soft, but it's almost done. I'm gonna go now because it's been plenty of time, but I'm gonna come back and I will. Bob Wilson, one, two, three. That's what her YouTube channel used to be. Bob Wilson, one, two, three. Isn't that funny how stuff will come to you later? Yeah, Claire, Bob Wilson, one, two, three. She has a really good channel. I don't. I think she's still active on there too because I, I actually looked her up the other day for some reason and she was still making videos. So anyway, I appreciate all those people who made those videos back in the day when I thought nobody did needlework but me. And uh, it was fun to, to find, to discover that on YouTube and other places that there were other people who did it and you felt like oh there's like a there's someone I have something in common you know with these people I do have a friend or two two friends that crochet um, and that's nice but they're both super busy and they they're not active in it you know it's not something that they do all the time but if I'm sitting I'm knitting or crocheting that's just me so I really appreciate all those people who made all those um, hard to make videos. Back when it was, you know, not as, you know, you didn't have as good a technology and the, the uh, YouTube wasn't quite as sophisticated as it is now. And people just made videos and, you know, there was one uh, I watched a lot that was a young lady from Britain that was living in the Middle East. And she, I thought I would never learn to make socks, but I watched her and I learned to make socks because of her. Expat, I think, I can't remember what her name was. I hadn't thought of her in years, just sitting here, I thought of it. And oh my goodness, I really appreciated that because I wanted to make socks so bad. And I didn't know anyone who did that, you know. But she, I found her, and she was like, you can make socks. You can do it. And I followed along, and I, I shed a lot of tears and broke a lot of needles. But I learned several different ways to do it, and I appreciated her. I probably never commented, because I never commented back then. I probably didn't know how. <laughs> I don't know. I appreciated her, her uh patience you know to look into a little camera and try to teach someone you can't see um and she taught me to knit socks and i just I, i'm so grateful because sock knitting has you know there's a time where like knitting socks was my i don't know my sanity when my mom was sick i crocheted but um she, my mother liked to quilt also and so um she was interested in that. And so I would sit in the hospital with her and I, I, I could sit with my little shoe box and cut uh, hexagons out and I put, I had a bazillion hexagons and I didn't do them right because I didn't know how to do it. Didn't have YouTube or anything. I was just making it up as I was going. And I put together the most hideous, horrible, ugly hexagon granny's uh, flower garden blanket you ever saw that I eventually did throw away because honestly all I had was sad memories for me. Uh, good memories, but very, very, um, you know, very sentimental. And it was never gonna make a blanket because it was done so bad. <laughs> I was very young, I was, you know, and, but my, I could visit with my mom and we, we'd talk about quilts and I would sit there for hours and cut those things out and sew them together. Anyway. Um, and I absolutely, I, but I'm going to make another one of those. I, I have a dream. I have a dream to make one. Um, but that did it for me then. But then after she passed away, I just lost my desire to do that. And I crocheted all that time, but I, I began to not, I began to just mostly crochet at that time. 
And then I learned to knit. And I did the embroidery all during that also. Um, the problem with taking embroidery with you is you have to take so much stuff. So that was difficult. And you lose a needle and then you worry forever that someone's going to step on it, you know. So I, I didn't like to take embroidery with me. But then when my sister was sick and I took care of her, uh, and that was a long 10-year ordeal, basically, I took crochet, I took knitting and crochet. And socks are small, the yarn is small, the needles are small. You can put it all in a Ziploc bag and stuff it down in your purse. Um, you know, and I just took it everywhere. And I would sit in the hospital and make those socks, make socks, make socks for my husband. He always liked my socks. And other people, you'd give them a homemade sock and they'd go, uh, what am I supposed to do with this, you know? But he always liked them. And I made some really ugly ones and some that were two socks that were not the same size. <laughs> but I eventually figured it out. And I and it it was my sanity during that time to be able to sit down and just knit and focus on the stitches for a moment when everything else around you is like going crazy um yeah and i have proof of how much i depended on literally on sock knitting at that time because i have a cabinet back there full of sock yarn i guess every time i would find it on sale i would buy it up you know i never bought it expensive yarn ever um, although I have some that's come from garage sales, but I, a couple of times I found some, a sock yarn at a, like a Tuesday morning where they sell things that have come from other stores cheaper. And I bought some fancy sock yarn, uh, there, but, uh, otherwise it's always been cheap, you know, patents is nice yarn, nice yarn, but nothing like, you know, no fancy stuff. And I tell you, it just was always nice and wonderful. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Try try needlework, and it's cheaper than therapy. Um, I should put that on a T-shirt. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, bye, y'all. I'm going to go and um, find some food because I'm hungry. <laughs> Have a blast Sunday tomorrow. Have a blast Sunday, and love your family. Mm -hmm and knit something or crochet. Bye-bye. <laughs>